Hey guys, welcome back. And in this week's episode, we are back at the sim rig. And in this week's episode, we are working on the shifter. Last video, I did an overview of my sim rig and I talked about how much I absolutely hate the Logitech G29 shifter. So in this one, we are going to fix that. A user commented that I should try the screw mod and that it would 100% make it feel a lot better. So I figured, what the heck, let's let's check out, let's check it out. So I went on Google, searched screw mod. I came across a Reddit forum and then I came across a YouTube video from within that. And it was a guy who was actually doing this mod and it seemed really easy. So I was like, what the heck, I'm gonna make my version of this. I'm gonna do it and we are going to test it and see if it feels any better than the stock shifter. Because if you've used the stock shifter, you know how awful it is. It's very loose and it's just no good. So let's just jump into doing the mod and then we'll come back. We will drive and we will, I'll give you my opinion on it. Obviously you can't feel it. And then we'll just go from there and see how it goes. But let's just jump into the actual mod right now, guys. Okay, so the first part of this process is we are going to have to remove the shifter off of the sim rig, obviously. For me, it was held together by one bolt and that was it. I took that off. I undid the wiring, which kind of sucked because the way it was routed and the way I put the seat in. But I got it done. First thing we're going to have to work on is getting these levers off. And these are kind of a pain just because of how long the screw is. And you're going to take the 10 millimeter hex off the bottom. I've already done it, so it's easier. And then you're going to just unscrew it until it comes off. In my case on here, there is like a holding nut on the top of that lever that screws in and that's what lets it go back and forth. That stayed on the lead screw thing. So I had to manually hold that while I unspun it. It took forever and you have to do this on both sides. But once you get it, it feels good because you don't have to do it again until you have to put it back together. Next, we're going to use our Phillips and we're just going to unscrew these two screws to start with. And these are going to hold this table clamp mechanism in place. But once you get them out, that piece pops out. Underneath it, there should be two screws, but I already took those out because I've done this previously. So I knew what I was getting into before I started filming. And now we have, I believe it's four screws on the bottom. I'm not really doing a good job of showing that here, but you just take them out. I believe they're black. The bottom screws are black and I do have a magnetic headed screwdriver and that helps with uh, pulling the screws out and then also putting them in later. Next thing I need to do is I need to come up with an Allen head of some sort because I have to remove the shift knob. And once I get that, it's this specific kit has like a rubber piece and then this piece goes on top of it and then the shift knob screws in. I simply loosen those two Allen keys and the whole thing slips off. It was really easy to install. I don't know if I'd recommend it for car installation, but for the sim, it's perfectly fine. Next thing I need to do is I got a smaller Allen key and this one is to remove the bolts that are going around the shift boot housing. But I only had like four or five screws in this. You should have all six, I believe it is. Once you get them out though, that piece slides right off and we had to take that off because underneath there are three screws and these are going to be the last screws that we need to remove to get to the internal mechanism and that's where we're going to be doing the mod at. So now we're going to pop the shell off and you'll see the internal mechanism here and that's where we need to actually perform the mod at. And you can see there it's it just moves pretty easy and there are six bolts holding this together well screws and I went ahead and I unplugged this wire. So when I take the entire mechanism out, the whole thing comes and it's not tethered to the main body with that wire so I don't break anything. But it takes these six screws and you have to have these in before you even attempt a test because if you don't, the tension and stuff will cause the little ball bearing to fall out. It's, it's a nightmare. So just before you test it, make sure that you have the screws in to keep it held in place so you don't lose the bolt or the spring or you don't have to take it out, fix it, put it back in, 
because it does get kind of tedious. Once we get the last screw out, we can grab it by both sides. Be careful because there is a spring and we're going to pull the whole thing straight out. And we don't want to let it go because that little ball bearing that causes the notchiness, you see it fall out right there. That'll fall out. There's a spring on the bottom that you don't want to like shoot across the room or anything. And you definitely don't want to lose the spring that that little ball bearing sits against. Or else you're just going to have the loosest shifter in the West, you know? And there's the spring. So in the video I watched of the guy doing this, he used... It was like a machine screw for an RC car, I believe, or something. I don't have that. But I did have this set of set screws that I got from Harbor Freight. And I'm going to use one of those because I think it'll be perfect to fit in the hole. And it should give enough pretension or preload to that spring to make the shifter feel nice. You can see right here, though, this one that I chose is a little too big. And I was thinking maybe I could screw it into the hole. So I tried changing my bit a couple times, but then I realized there is just absolutely no way that I'm going to get that into that hole without splitting the plastic, stripping out the, like, the set screw, or just something that I don't want to happen that's going to happen and make things even worse. So in the end, I go to an even smaller one that just slides right down in the hole, but yet it's still big enough that the spring doesn't actually like go around it. So it gives a good pretension to the spring and that ball bearing. And it's simply slid in. I think I attempted to put two in there at first because I thought, hey, let's make this really like pretensioned and strong. But then I came to find out that it was really hard to put it together with all that like all that tension on that spring. It didn't want to go straight in. It was like kind of wonky. So I ended up just putting one in in the end. And it ended up working out that way. And now comes the fun part of trying to sandwich this all back together. I found it easier. You see the bearing rolling away right there. I found this easier to get the spring on the bottom together on both of them. Because one side will not come off of the uh, mechanism because it has like a potentiometer or an encoder switch over there. So then I found if I held that side and I just pulled the other side over it would slowly stretch that spring and then whenever it was almost there I could set the ball into the spring and then I could line it up with the hole and close it and sandwich it and it would work that way this did take me a couple of attempts because you are of course putting more tension on the spring so it it makes it to where it doesn't push in as easy because you have to push a lot more in so in this step, I say just use some patience. Don't rush it. And it should work out. Just be careful. And you will eventually get it like I did right there. And you instantly want to hold it and not let it go. You're going to grab the case. You're going to slide the mechanism into the case. Make sure the wire isn't in the way. Make sure that that little potentiometer thing is correct and it's not in the way. And we're going to start putting these six screws in. And I just have to reiterate, make sure you put these in before you test it or else the whole thing will be coming back out so that you can replace that ball bearing or the spring because it's just not going to work. It's going to come apart. Once this final screw is in, we can give it a quick test. And you see how like notchy that is? It feels really good. It's really loud, which is unfortunate, but the feeling is fantastic. And that's what I was hoping that there would be some sort of change that would positively impact the shifting on my thing. So I'm very happy with that. We need to make sure we plug in the wire. We need to route it out of the way back the way that we got it. So that way when we put the two halves of the shell together, we don't pinch cut a wire or mess anything up because we don't want to get this far just to have something like that get in the way and mess us all up. We'll put the top back on and just like when we took it apart, we're going to put all the screws back in the exact way that we pulled them out. And then we'll be able to throw this thing on the sim rig and we will give it a test. Okay, so we are finished with the mod. We're back. It's 
I put the shifter back on the rig. It feels good. I did have an issue. In the video, I say to watch the wires. So when you put the shells together, it doesn't clamp the wire and mess it up. That is exactly what I did. So I had to take it apart because it wasn't recognizing the wheel when I would plug it into the computer. And that turned out to be the culprit. But now we are up and running. I am in a no hezzy server right now. And we are just going to... We are just going to try this and drive it. I will say I haven't used the shifter too much originally, so it's kind of weird for me to use it. I'm used to the pedal shifters, so that'll be a little to get used to. But just sitting here, I do feel a difference, and it feels nice. Will it stop my miss shifts? I don't know. It could That could just all be my fault. But the feeling, it feels really nice, and it feels like it's not going to fall out of the gear. So, we are in an RX-7 right now, in the Nohezi, I think this is the light traffic server. So I guess let's just give this a go. Hold on, I need to make sure turbo's up. Okay. I can tell already that it does feel good, and I did not miss the shift between third and fourth. That used to be a miss. Like, I would always go from third to second trying to bring it into fourth gear. So, that sucks. Well, it doesn't suck. That, I don't know. I This is just awesome. I'm so excited right now. Dang, I'm already maxed out. Anyways, my initial feelings are... It definitely felt good. Let's start over, because I want to start that again. Like, just this beginning part, if I can manage to not run into the wall. But just the beginning part right here. It feels so good to just roll through the gears. It feels very similar to how my Camaro feels in real life. Um, I could definitely use with, like, getting an upgrade for the, like, clutch pedal or something and the brake to make that feel more realistic, but I can live with that stuff. But right now, holy crap, I gotta say, thank you for suggesting this, because this has got to be the best thing that I've done to this so far. Like, this is a good mod. It feels good. I'm so excited about it. And I feel like you, sh you should definitely try this if you do not like the stock Logitech shifter. It's super easy to do. You just have to have the right tools, a couple screwdrivers, Allen keys. And you can, even you can do this. Talking to you on the other side of the camera. It's awesome. Like, what the heck? Oh. Oh. I got too excited, but we made it. These now Hezzy servers are so fun. If you've never done it, you should probably try it. It does take a whole bunch of, like, processing on the computer because all the AI and everything. But my gosh, is it worth it. It is so fun. Dang. I'm going to give this one more go. And I'll wrap up the video, but... If you guys have issues with the Logitech G29 stock feeling of the shifter, definitely give the screw mod. Give this a go. I'll list... I'll link the original video down in the description, because I do want to give that guy credit, because this was not my idea. But I figured I'd do my own rendition of putting it into video form, so... Thank you to the user, I don't remember the name, but it'll be down there, so check it out. Make sure to leave a comment on any other mods you know of that I can try, because this was like, this is a game-changing mod, in my opinion. Everybody should do this, or they should just come stock. I don't know, this is just, it feels so good. But, leave a comment, let me know any other ideas. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it or if it helped you. 
um, subscribe. I really want to get more subscribers. That would be pretty cool. But anyways, I'm going to get off here. Until next time, guys. See you later. Uh, I went too crazy and got a miss shift, went into third, and that's all she wrote. See you guys.